And today I'm going to detail how regular intake of vitamin D and iodine both fight the insulin resistance of type 2 diabetes. Vitamin D deficiency is common in diabetics because when vitamin D is plentiful, it contributes to the release of insulin from pancreatic beta cells while also increasing the sensitivity of the insulin receptor. Vitamin D also supports the effects of the metabolic regulator PPAR gamma, which itself is a major force behind insulin sensitivity and enhanced glucose metabolism. And here is one area where you can see how iodine complements these insulin sensitizing actions of vitamin D, and also how an iodine deficiency worsens type 2 diabetes because iodine, specifically as molecular iodine, dramatically increases the activity of PPAR gamma while also increasing glucose uptake through glucose transporter type 4 or GLUT4, which governs the intake of glucose into fat and muscle cells. Iodine is a well-known primary component of thyroid hormones, and thyroid disease is far more common in diabetics. Hypothyroidism, or low thyroid, is also much more common with a vitamin D deficiency. Oxidative stress and inflammation both contribute heavily to the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes, as the glycation of proteins, glucose oxidation, increased lipid peroxidation, impaired glutathione metabolism, and decreased vitamin C levels all contribute to excessive oxidative stress, damaged cellular processes, and increased insulin resistance. Iodine, again specifically as molecular iodine, can protect against this cascade of oxidative stress, both by directly neutralizing oxidative stress itself, and also indirectly through iodine support of the thyroid, which definitely influences the activity of antioxidant metabolic enzymes like superoxide dismutase. Molecular iodine also increases the activity of scavenger receptor liver cells that mediate the delivery of the beneficial HDL cholesterol to cells, while also enabling HDL's transport of dietary cholesterol back to the liver for proper excretion, which is known specifically as reverse cholesterol transport. And this is especially important because the excess of triglycerides that is typical of type 2 diabetes sharply reduces levels of HDL cholesterol. Iodine is also a powerful inhibitor of inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-6. These two cytokines are some of the primary players behind the orchestration of chronic low-grade inflammation that distinguishes type 2 diabetes. And this is another area where you can see the supportive action of vitamin D because vitamin D also inhibits both of these inflammatory cytokines. As beneficial as vitamin D and iodine are towards the components of type 2 diabetes, you do definitely need to take a few other nutrients to activate both properly, and these would primarily be the minerals selenium and magnesium. Because selenium is needed to activate deiodinases, which are the metabolic enzymes that convert the thyroid hormone thyroxine, or T4, into the far more active and metabolism-boosting triiodothyronine, or T3. Also, selenium is a required cofactor for glutathione peroxidase, a major metabolic enzyme that definitely contributes to iodine's antioxidant function. And we need magnesium to activate the liver enzymes that then convert vitamin D from its liver storage form calcidiol into its active form calcitriol. Both magnesium and vitamin D have beneficial effects on the thyroid gland, which definitely affects the performance of iodine. As just one example, like selenium, magnesium also contributes to the conversion of T4 to T3, and so an all-too-common magnesium deficiency definitely impairs this process. And vitamin D, for its part, can normalize the diabetes-disrupted levels of the thyroid-stimulating hormone, and also, like magnesium, the conversion of T4 to T3. So you can really see here how selenium, magnesium, iodine, and vitamin D all work together to optimize thyroid function. So how much iodine and vitamin D should you take every day? Try for around 1,000 micrograms of molecular iodine, and ideally, look for a molecular iodine that's also paired with the much more common potassium iodide, which improves molecular iodine's overall absorption capacity. And remember to also take your iodine with around 200 micrograms of selenium. For vitamin D, try taking around 5,000 IU every day, along with 500 milligrams of magnesium. Well, you can take all of these any time throughout the day. Because iodine will likely give you some energy, you might want to take all four of these nutrients in the morning with food.
Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.